Hey guys, this is Game of Cow. Welcome to the 29th of our Pokemon TCG sets. I hope the audio is not muddied too much by the fact that the vehicles are going on outside. It is very hot this evening. Uh, you may have heard me complain a decent bit during the actual previous video. Uh, this is being recorded straight afterwards, so yeah, I need to have the window open or I am going to cook. We are on the 29th set here, Crystal Guardians. I do not like this set. I will be just totally upfront. I do not think this set is particularly healthy for the game and there's a lot. It's not very good for draft either because there's a lot of dud in this one. There's gonna be some kind of neat things going on, but I just think a lot of it is going to be very painful. I th Maybe this is amplified by the fact that we've just had a rotation that's rotated out a lot of very good cards and we don't have a particularly strong draw engine in this one either, so I don't know. But the main culprits are these two cards right here, Cessation Crystal and Crystal Beach, which pretty much just shut down a ton of stuff. No Poke Powers or Poke Bodies and no uh, special energy that do double or triple energy requirements. So this shuts off the whole lot, guys, as well. Yes, there needs to be some counterplay, but uh, some of these things feel a little bit too easy. On the plus side, Double Rainbow gets a reprint, and is actually, you know, kind of a nice looking card too, so there is that. A lot of the good power cards are in the EXs here though, and that obviously makes it rather hard to pull these very good cards, but uh, there have been some already. Uh, everybody except Leo has done their draft so far, and we have a few of the Agron in play, we have a couple of the Delcaddies in play, there's even Groudon. Uh, Jirachi is another one that's actually really good here as well. Um, we haven't seen stuff like the Swampert though, so hopefully we get something that way. And then as far as build arounds go here, uh, because there's a couple which are kind of worth it, I'm curious about the Swalot, even though it's more expensive and more difficult to do, I think this maybe could be something to try with Flareon. Grumpig would be an interesting one to try because it has the same attack as Ludicolo did, but it's on the stage 1, so maybe that's a bit easier to play. And there's a couple other good ones in here as well. There's some engine cards for Delta in here, like the Fero and the Pelipper. We'll get into them as we go. Uh, and then there's some other good supports too. Mawile and uh, Taurus are in here, which are very good. First time and probably only time that we get to see Mawile as having a good card. This set has a ton of rares, which are just stage 1 Pokemon, however. The Combuscan, Loudra. Eggly buff is a rare here too. There's a lot of jank, a lot of chaff in this set, so we'll just have to see what we pull. Hopefully we get some good stuff. So, oh I should say, there are some promos here as well. Um, a lot of them are pop series promos that are just never going to get played anyway, so we've distilled it down to the ones that are actually like new or potentially playable. Sadly I already have a place end of this Typhlosion, so that has to be up for trade. The EXs are probably never going to see play, but we should have them available anyway. And then theme decks, there are three of them this time, but the only one that's actually any good is this one, because it has one of the Fero to search out Delta Species Mons, and one of the Pelipper to search out uh, to switch out your Delta Species Mons. Maybe we could get this one if we have like triple uh, Venusaur or something and we need a fourth one. Who knows? Anyway, enough talk. Have at you, Crystal Guardians. Let's see what we can open here and see if there's anything of interest. Well, this is a pretty reasonable start, so we already have the Fero here. As I said, the Fero lets you search for any Delta Species Pokemon out of your deck. The catch with this guy is that Spearow is not a Delta Species Pokemon. So it does clash a little bit here, and it's a hard once per turn on this thing, but it doesn't get shut off by Battle Frontier either, so, or the Delta Pidgeot. So there's not as many ways of disabling this other than exactly Cessation Crystal, which there is a counter to in this set, hopefully we pull enough of that. Otherwise nothing too fancy, the Medicham here is the rare, is another one of these dual armor cards, which uh, it's Psychic and Fighting type, which is pretty cool, but it just doesn't hit hard enough in the first place. No resistance on the types that I've resisted the most often is pretty nice though. So there is that. There's an Electrike that also puts a card from the discard into hand. It probably isn't better than the high voltage one though, because that stops uh, trainers, uh, supporters as well. So 
there is that. Here is the first dot rare that I'm talking about. It is an EDHP Combuscan, so maybe this is fine. It's also Fighting type, which works with the EX, so if we did manage to pull the EX, we could probably use this. But honestly, terrible. Absolutely terrible. Moving on. A couple of good cards to talk about in this one here. First off, the Trico is Delta Species, so that's kind of neat if we did get the Zeptile EX. Morwile? Morwile is actually a good card for once. One energy, search your deck for a trainer card, put it into your hand. If it's a tool card, you can attach it to your Pokemon instead. So you can search for the Cessation Crystal, attach it with this attack, and the opponent can't do Poke Powers and Poke Bodies next turn. Very, very irritating card to say the least. Bite Off is also whatever, it's not really that strong, but it's mostly for this first attack. If you don't need a tool, you can search for a supporter for next turn or just another item that you really want, so excellent card. Blastoise? Is this a weird one? Um, Blastoise EX did just rotate, so we do not have the support with that anymore, sadly. Um, it would be nice too, because your active would have no weakness, it's the same thing as Kingdra at that point. Uh, makes it very good for anti-lightning, and a lot of Delta Species cards are lightning, so it's pretty solid to have that. Good typing here as well. The attacks are where it loses me a bit though. Enrage Linear Attack is fine, like it's the same attack as Psychic Rage, but um, we don't have many ways of really facilitating that. Uh, we can't play Metagross because it's... well we could because you could accelerate Metal Energy, but it's like Metagross Blastoise is weird. This is also the only Delta Species in the line, so there's no Delta Species Squirtle or anything which is annoying, and Skull Bash just doesn't do that much damage. So I'm not really sure how you use this yet, but I'm sure there's a deck around it, because it does seem pretty good. Shoutouts to the Charmander here as well, because it has Retaliate, so you can use this as a Rage style attack for the Charizard, which is pretty solid, so could be good. Here's a couple of interesting cards. We have, uh, first off we have a Mudkip with Submerge, so can't take bench damage whilst it is on the bench. Very good for the Mudkip line itself, because uh, Swamp Hurt's actually pretty good. Castaway is a very good card to see here. This is its own engine if we can get enough copies of it. Search your deck for a supporter card, which Castaway is, a Pokemon Tool card, aka Cessation Crystal, and a basic energy card. So we can guarantee that we get the energy that we need to do our setup based attacks. We also then have the tools and we have uh, the supporter for next turn as well. So lots of good stuff going on there. Wigglytuff I think is a little bit underpowered here unfortunately. There are some interesting things this could maybe do with Flareon, but I think it's too weak overall. If we get enough of it we could try it though. It auto sleeps if uh, it's damaged whilst it's in the active, so that's kind of neat. Uh, collect is okay, I mean you could use this as a rare candy thing I suppose, go uh, Wigglytuff instantly and draw free. We've lost a good Jigglypuff I think though, so that's kind of lame. And uh, Pester is 50 for 2 if the opponent's affected by a special condition. The catch is that we lost Surprise Time Machine, which means that you have to rely on Super Scoop Up to reuse the Flareons, and I don't think 50 damage is enough of a payoff for that, so it's a little bit awkward. Memory Berry is a card that comes back. I don't remember how many copies of this I have from Aquapolis, I believe it was. But it is the same card, so we can use this in lieu of having to play the... Uh, what's it called? Um, Meteor Falls, which is good because this can be played on EXs as well. So there's maybe some rage-based stuff that you could do with, for example, Tyranitar EX, which would be pretty fun. Okay. We have a couple of things to, to note here, another sort of dud rare for Igglybuff here, although I will say if you do end up playing the Wigglytuff deck, this Wigglytuff has got a 2 energy retreat cost, so maybe uh, it's okay for that. Uh, we also lost a special condition healing Wigglytuff though, because that was Fire Red Leaf Green, so I don't think this is that good, but you do pay less to retreat your lines here which actually includes itself, so what you could do is you could play this as a zero retreat starter, which is very interesting. Cessation Crystal is the real problem point here though. You attach it to one of your Pokemon that isn't an EX, and as long as it's your active Pokemon, every Pokemon in play can't use Poke Powers or Poke Bodies. I really don't like this card design. I feel like this is too easy, and... Warp Point is not enough of a deterrent in order to 
play around this. Like, what point is definitely going to have to go into a lot of the decks here, but I don't think that's enough. If you want to play powers, and trust me, this set you want to play powers, that's a huge detriment. And this guy right here is actually one of the punishes for when you use Cessation Crystal too. Kingler Delta is another one of these Kingler that does a lot of damage for, in this case, a reasonable amount of energy. Uh, fire and two colorless is okay. If it has a tool attached to it, it's 80 for free. 80 damage on the stage one is quite a lot. Uh, this is good with the stuff like the Mawile, obviously. Body Slam is also passable if you can put a Metal Energy on this thing. Maybe if you've got like Research Tower in play or whatever. Um, it has a lot going for it. You could use Energy Root on this thing to make it 100 HP, doing 80 damage a turn, which is solid. You could, of course, use Cessation Crystal on this thing, so you can deny powers and everything in play. You could use things like Solid Rage, Strength Charm, etc. Uh, a lot going for it. Its retreat cost is huge, though. So maybe even Fluffy Berry could go in. Uh, there's some stuff. I can, if I get enough of this, I could use it with um, Slow King because the item search Slow King or the tool search Slow King is still in play. This Loudred, I'm only noting it because it is actually a rare. So rip <laughs> if you ever get that as the main thing. Oh, here's one that not a lot of people have got. Also another Combuscan. What the heck? Um, this Ludicolo was one that people were looking for. Maybe I can trade something for this. Um, it has the same overzealous power as the Machamp did, where if the opponent's got any EXs in play, you do 30 more damage with your attacks. Doesn't have to be attacking the EX, it just has to, the opponent just has to have one in play. And then Knock Off is pretty solid, like discard a card from the opponent's hand, and Fire Punch 60 for free is okay. It's not as powerful outright as the other Ludicolo, but it's also a different type. So you can use this and still use Scramble Energy on it too. You can use this with the Scramble, and it's fine, just play like one of this alongside, get a different type matchup, so pretty solid. Uh, Shop it has Ascension, this is worth noting because there's a Bennett in here that has Safeguard, also you could use this with Bennett EX as well if you wanted to, so worth a note. Okay, a um, couple of good cards to talk about in here, the Venusaur is a build around, I think. Any energy cards that only provide colorless energy to your grass Pokemon, uh, provide grass energy instead. That matters because Green Blast is the same attack that the Sunflora that we never picked up in Unseen Forces had, where it's 20 for 2, plus 10 for each Grass Energy on all of your Pokemon. So if you are using Boost Energy for this attack, you would just do 50 for one attachment, which is kind of neat. But the more energy you keep in play, the better. And also, this means that you can use stuff like Warp and Cyclone Energy and still get damage out of it. Heal Energy as well. There's some interesting colorless providers that you can use with this. Toxic Sleep is fine, it's nothing too fancy, but uh, I guess Double Poison plus the potential for sleep. A bit disruptive, but not really super ridiculous, I don't think. Swallowed, on the other hand. So hear me out. I know that Flareados is the better deck because the Ariados only took one energy to do its thing. This takes three, but its base damage is 40 higher. I think there might still be something here, and the multiplier isn't as good, but you do 90 for the same thing that the Ariados did 70 for. Reactive Poison is 50 plus 20 for each special condition, as you've been reading, so that's that's okay. You can still power this up with Scramble, and you could still use other uh, energy provider stuff as well. I don't know how you're getting enough energy on this thing yet, I haven't quite worked it out, but there may be something to it. Pick and choose is also an interesting attack here. You either burn and burn or poison and sleep or confuse. So you could do poison confusion or burn confusion if you want, but the Flareon already does burn confusion. So I think confusion is usually the better option than sleep. Maybe you need to try and run the risk and make the opponent uh, flip for the effect, but I think you usually go for confusion and something else. So just depends on what you've already got, but potentially you could set up for an even bigger reactive poison next turn and be very, very fine with it, you know? A bit expensive at two energy, but could still work. Shoutouts to the Aron here for Flail, because it's another rage based attack. There's an Agron EX in this set, so Memory Berry can work for that too. So, worth noting. Here's another Kingler, so that's kind of neat. Um, 
yeah, maybe we do try and play some of that. I know Sai's looking for this too, so we might be able to trade it. Depends on what's going on with it. Next pack. Ooh, a couple of fun ones. Blastoise is in the bean deck. I think if we still have Blastoise EX, this would have been an extremely good card. Uh, if it has 40 or less HP remaining, it does 40 more damage to the opponent. So this is the same as the Blaziken that we saw before. I don't know why it's called Water Pressure instead of Torrent. That seems a bit weird, because the Blaziken was Blaze, so you would have thought, but whatever. Um, also, 50 for free, pretty weak to be honest, but it does do more damage for every energy you go beyond that. For like, it's 50 for free, 70 for 4, 90 for 5. It's not stupidly powerful without its ability, but it also has a lot of HP. It's a one prizer, so it's hard to knock out in one go. And then it goes to like 90, 110, 130, which are very, very strong numbers. So there's something to it. It's just a shame because we lost the enabler for this. So it's one set too late. What isn't one set too late though is the Charizard. There's got to be something we can do with this thing. 120 HP, 120 damage on its attack, but you've got two medals in that cost and you have to discard all the metal to use this thing. So you probably need to play this with Metagross from Deoxys, because that's still in format. Uh, but its own ability can somewhat mitigate for stuff as well here. When you evolve to Charizard, you can look at the top 5 cards of your deck, attach all of the energy that you find there to one of your Pokemon, and discard all the other cards. So, a little bit self-destructive, but I think there's something you could make work with this. We'll have to see. We did just lose Pokemon Retriever as well, so maybe it's a little bit too hard to get the stuff out again, but... If we could finagle it, could be something to it. Also, just want to note the low tad here, because if it has any energy, water energy on it, it has no retreat cost. So another good starter Pokemon to have. Celio's network was already in Pop Series 2, but this is a good reprint for it to have nonetheless. Here is another Blastoise. We have obviously gone over this, but uh, hey, maybe there's something to that as well. Like if you use enough rainbow based energies or whatever, uh, this guy giving no weakness, you could maybe do something that way. Um, Meditite's got pure power, it's kind of nice I suppose, and uh, look at this Jigglypuff, it's very cute. Auto Sleep is actually pretty good too, so this isn't a terrible Jigglypuff, but uh, still. Round out the first third here, a second Venusaur, okay, so we could potentially go into that deck if we want. Nothing too huge yet, but uh, that is okay, we've got plenty of time, and as soon as I say that we get probably the best Pokemon card out of this set, question mark? I think it's really good anyway. Alakazam Star. I've gone from having no stars to having like three of them in the last three sets. This is hilarious. So, this competes with Mewtwo and Psychic based decks, I think. But I think it competes pretty favorably. Um, but any one card from your discard pile into your hand for a single energy is really, really good for control decks. And skill copy for free energy on the basic is somewhat expensive, but the, it's all colorless, so there's plenty of ways we could accelerate this. Uh, you discard a Pokemon from your hand, choose one of those cards' attacks, and do that attack, so long as you can pay for it. So, that's still kind of neat. You can use this in any deck that you want, because it is colorless to attack with it. So, there's a lot that you can do. Again, Pokemon Retriever rotating does hurt this a fair bit, it's unfortunate. But if you can keep a stream of stuff going, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with this. I also want to note the counter to Cessation Crystal in here, Windstorm. If you know Expanded, you'll know this as Field Blower, because it's exactly the same card. Choose up to two in any combination of Pokemon tools and Stadium cards in play, both yours and your opponents, and discard them. If you've attached a tool that you can't get rid of and you really need to get rid of it, this is your guy. If the opponent's got Cessation Crystal on the active, this is your guy. If you... <laughs> You know, so many things you can do. Thankfully, Cessation Crystal can't be attached to a Manetric EX, so you can't get disabled on that and your powers at the same time. But yeah, you can also get rid of Battle Frontier so you can do your search stuff. Although Pidgeot has been rotated, but Porygon too. Definitely need to have a lot of this card because we really do want that available. Uh, you only normally play two, but I guess if you're playing a heavy Porygon line, you might want to play three. Here's another Swalot, so that's coming together. I've got three Flareon and I've got uh, two Swalot now, so there's that. Pelipper is another decent card, although we don't have a Delta Wingull, so it's the same sort of thing as Flygon here, but once during your turn, if your Pelipper is on the bench, switch your active Delta with one of your benched Pokemon. So this isn't quite 
the same as the Dodrio, this is a switch, not a pay less to retreat. This means that you can do this in addition to your actual retreat for turn, so there are plenty of awesome things that you can do with this. The attacks are terrible, nobody cares it's a bench sitter, so very very nice card. Moving on here, another Ludicolo. Okay, people were looking for this card, so I could probably get some decent stuff out of this. Also want to shout out this Ivysaur because it's got 10 less HP, but I think its attacks are really solid, so uh, that could be something if we do play the Venusaur deck. Move on, Sableye is a good one. Uh, Crystal Beach is also worth noting, we'll get to that in a sec. So Sableye, in, if it's in play, you may look at the top card of your deck and either put it back on top of the deck if you like it, or if you don't like it, discard it. Not quite as good as Trekking Shoes nowadays, but it's still pretty strong. It has no weakness, so that's always good too. And Disable for any one energy stops the opponent from using one of their attacks next turn so forces them to do some action in order to get away with stuff. You can use this in a lot of really cool ways, so good card to have around. Then we get to Crystal Beach over here. Yeah, if you have a double rainbow, a scramble, or a holon, cast form, magneton, etc. on your Pokemon, then your energy is only one colorless instead of a double rainbow or a scramble or any of that fun stuff, so not amazing, to be honest, as far as uh, you know, playing against it goes if you are relying on that sort of thing, so we may see some simpler decks uh, in that aspect come out, but who knows. Also, just want to say, this Ivysaur is kind of cute. This might actually be the better Ivysaur overall just because it has 80 HP, but I think it's interesting because this one's weak to Psychic, whereas this one's weak to Fire. Does the Bulbasaur, like we've got the Bulbasaur's here too, do they have? They do have that same thing to it as well. Interesting. So you've got differences as to what you choose to be weak to until you get to Venusaur. That's kind of neat. Moving on. I haven't seen that before, so uh, Crystal Shard gets another reprint here. I missed it the last time, so I think I'm on three of this now. Another Pelipper is pretty good too. We might not need to take that deck if we get another Fero at the same time. Moving on here, I wanted to see this guy. Swampert is cool. So I already have the Swampert from Emerald which does some interesting things. Spinning Tail and uh, the Aquasonic is also not affected by resistance. Kind of funny how that works out. Um, this one, if it's in play, you just draw a card. I haven't had access to this yet. Um, maybe we could use like a full-on Swamper deck. Hopefully we get the EX that we could use that with too. We haven't had an EX yet. Um, and we could just use this to play with that one Macago that I have, which would be pretty solid. Uh, moving on. Double Rainbow, I was really hoping to see one. Uh, I'd like to see a second ideally, because I want to trade it to Pepper because he's only got three. Double Rainbow being in this set means I finally have four of it, which is excellent. Grumpig, I know the disc before for circular steps, 10 damage times number of Pokemon in play in total, except itself, so it caps out at 110. 110 for a rather expensive cost here. Scramble Energy can provide it if you can keep Crystal Beach away though. One of the cool things Grumpig has going for it though is that Thick Fat prevents it from taking as much damage from Fire and Water Pokemon, which aren't all of the metagame obviously, but it's still pretty good for tanking capabilities. And there's another Blastoise, nothing really that we haven't seen otherwise in here though, so let's just move on. I do actually kind of find it funny how Spearow has got Spearhead as an attack. It just seems interesting to me. There's a third Swallot. Okay, we really could play Flareon Swallot. I'm gonna have to try it. I think it could actually be kind of neat. Uh, I don't know if we've had enough Gulpin yet though. I'll have to take a look and see what's available that way. Uh, let's keep going. Second Fero. Okay, we do not have to take that deck anymore, which is good. Maybe I do take the Venusaur one, who knows. Second Castaway as well. Uh, nothing else really to note in here. I guess Warp Point gets a reprint because it was not uh, going to be in format otherwise. Okay, here's our first EX. I don't know if this is one of the better ones, but I also do know that uh, Pepper has this one, so maybe we could do something there. If Groudon has less energy, you know, one or less energy attached to it, it takes 20 less damage from the opponent's attacks. That's actually kind of neat, and it also applies to any of your Groudon EX, so that's actually really cool. If you have like two or three of this thing in play, and just one of them on the bench doesn't have uh, energy on it, 
then you take 20 less damage, even if you have 3. That's pretty sweet. Its attack is relatively strong, 100 for free energy. Uh, the two fighting is awkward, but you can charge it with something like the Holon guys. You have to discard two energy, so you're probably discarding the Holon guy for this, but then that puts you back down at one energy on the Groudon, so you take less damage. Really neat synergy. Again, maybe somewhere with Meganium and, uh, and an LBS style thing. I don't know. Or we could just pull two of it ourselves. You know, that works too, right? Um, this is the first time I've noticed Grumpin. Uh, Grumpin? Gulpin. But uh, that doesn't mean it's the only one I have, it's just the only one I've noticed. It has Amnesia as its attack. This is an annoying Grumpin. Uh, I said it again. Gulpin. It's an annoying little stomach guy. That's, uh, yeah, there's, there's potential for that deck. Dual Ball gets a reprint here too, but it was already in format, so who cares? Last third here. Yo, Jirachi. Okay, I've heard this card is really good. I'm... I kind of see it. Let's go through it and see if we can work out why. It has no weakness, that's probably a pretty good plus actually, a psychic type with no weakness, so it doesn't get hit by itself for weakness, it's pretty sweet. If the opponent has an EX or a stage 2 evolution in play, doesn't they don't have to have each, it's just like one or the other, uh, you pay one less colorless for your attacks. So that makes Shield Beam a one psychic, 30 damage, stop the opponent playing Poker Powers next turn. So you don't need the Cessation Crystal on this ink to do that. That's kind of fun. Super Cybolt is a 2 energy 50 attack at that point. You're probably mostly using it for early game Shield Beaming, if you can. But that requires the opponent to be playing EXs as well. I don't know if that's going to be too good in our format. But you know what? It's solid enough. We can probably do something with that. Just when I said I wasn't getting enough EXs and whatnot, right? Here's another Manetric. If this thing's got a Pokemon tool attached to it, Strong Current is 50 plus 20 to each of the opponent's benched EXs. Very good against some decks, probably not good enough against our format. Most of the time we've been very EX averse, so... I don't know, it's something I might need to watch out for in Evolutions, however, so... Gotta keep it in mind. Moving on here, a third Fero. Fair enough. Uh, there's another Gulpin, so we are getting some of those at least, which is fine. Uh, let's just keep on going here. Taurus! I was really hoping to see that. Also another Grumpig. Don't know if we can actually make something with these yet, but uh, we'll have to see. Taurus is really, really good. You might know Pumpkaboo in the current format, where if you bench it from the hand, you can discard a Stadium card in play. That's one of the two really good things this Taurus does. Uh, the second is Call for Family which is just a solid attack if you happen to open this thing. Search your deck for two basics and bench them, right? Same thing the Plusle does, but this has better utility than the Plusle on average because uh, you can use this with uh, the fact that stadiums get discarded. So you can use it much more effectively, I think. Moving on here, this is our third Venusaur, I believe. So yeah, we might well take that deck at this point because I have enough of the Fero and everything. So. That's cool. We could, I could try Venusaur. A uh, Venusaur Meganium seems kind of fun, right? Um, let's move on. Oh, we don't take that deck anymore because we have four of them. Okay. Uh, how many have we got left? Quite a few. Okay, like seven packs or something. Let's keep going. Another Blastoise. It's like the third one of this one or something. So I guess that's neat. Uh, let's keep going here. Third Castaway. Fourth Castaway. I'm a little bit worried that I haven't gotten that many crystals yet. Uh, I think there's only one that I've seen. Second Swampert is pretty good though. So yeah, we need a little bit more of that on the close here, I think. That's a third Ludicolo. Wait, but I don't have the other one, so how am I going to play this deck? <laughs> I think we trade these to other people and try and get some stuff that we want out of that. Uh, here's a very happy looking Marsh Tom, by the way. Uh, blocks the opponent retreating next turn. That could actually be pretty alright. <laughs> Windstorm is good. Dow Caddy EX though. Oh, this might be the best one of the set, actually, for our purposes. Mostly because we have two Dow Caddy from all the way back in Ruby Sapphire, which is which are going to come back uh, in Power Keepers. So this is setting up for Infer Caddy at the end of uh, end of the format. Constraint is pretty okay. Uh, you make both players discard until they have six cards in their hand. You do have to discard first, but that is fine. Um, upstream is the main reason you use this card. You search your discard power for all of your energy, which includes special energy. Do 10 damage for each one you find there, and then shuffle them into the deck, which is really good. Uh, Tail Slap is fine, like boost energy for 60, 
Uh, boost energy is really good with this card in general, actually. And uh, yeah, you use this with the other Delcaddy, discard a ton of energy to draw however many cards you want, and then uh, upstream for lots of damage. It's pretty solid. Uh, yeah, also got zero retreat, so it's not hard to, to get out of the active too. Uh, okay, two packs left. I have only seen one crystal. Oh, that's a concern. Uh, lots of Fero, however. So I guess we're all set for searching our Dowler Pokemon. Another double rainbow is good. Uh, yeah, only one cessation crystal, and only one crystal beach too, so we're not doing any of the disrupting stuff here, that is for sure, because those cards are not in the decks. So, I don't really know what, uh, what to make of that, but honestly, I've gotten enough other interesting things in here, and I don't really like playing the control setup. We will have to see how this goes. Uh, I believe there were a couple of good groups of cessation crystals pulled. I think it's like three of them were pulled from... Uh, who am I thinking? Three of them I think were pulled by Psy, and uh, I think I think it was three from Psy, it's three or four, and uh, three of them were pulled by Pepper. Matt didn't get any of them, I don't think, and we only have the one, so... Uh, curious. We might not have to... Well, we will have to worry about it a bit, but we might not have to worry about it from quite as many angles as I was expecting. Okay, two Windstorm is the absolute minimum here. I don't remember... I don't think this card gets a reprint, unfortunately, so we might be a little stuck here, but I know Matt has got, like, tons of them, so we might be able to get something off of him for that. Yeah, one crystal, one beach, unfortunate. Full play set of Castaway, so we have this uh, setup. Uh, there's a lot of good tools, though, in Unseen Forces, if we remember right, so this could still be an engine that I play. Uh, two Double Rainbow is fine, two Rain Memory Berries should be fine, I'm pretty sure I had at least two of them before. Might have had a full play set, so we might not have had to worry there. Crystal Shard now gives me a full play set, which is good. And then we look at the actual Pokémon. One Jirachi X is, is fantastic. Two Groudon is very interesting, actually. I may want to mess around with this. Uh, two Grumpig, we might be able to trade into that. I did not have a Gulpin before, so we need to trade for Gulpins. But that's okay, That's that should be doable. It's an uncommon that uh, nobody's going to play outside of this, I think. So, yeah, we should be okay with that. Uh, the one Mobile is fine, one Sableye is fine. Delcad EX is brilliant. Uh, this Skitty I don't think is the one that you play, but we've got four of it anyway, so that is good. Lots and lots and lots of Ludicolos, so we can definitely make use of that for trading. Uh, two of the Swamp Hood here. I think the Rare Marsh Tomp is actually not in the deck, because I don't think it's a fighting base. Yeah, I think it's a water base one, so... Which is a shame, because I think the attack on that thing is actually very good, so... A little bit awkward on that, but it's fine. The one Tauros is good enough. Two Kingler, probably better to trade this than to keep hold of it. Uh, Alakazam Star is amazing. I'm really happy to see that. Uh, four Fero, which is two Fero, too many, but whatever. Uh, full four uh, of this, though. Like We've got basically the entire line that we would ever need on all sides for this. So that's very cool. Again, might try something with that. Just the one Charizard, we probably trade that at this point. I'd like to maybe try uh, Metagross with that, but I don't think it's going to be the thing. And then two Pelipper is more than enough. If we take a look at the, the spares, there's nothing really in here, I don't think. There's maybe if somebody missed a low tad or something, but I don't think there's anything worth noting here. Some of the stuff that we missed... Uh, nobody has the Swamp Hood EX, which I think is a real shame, because there's a lot of Agron going around at the moment, and these two made their own deck. I was hoping to pull one, because I do like the idea of this thing, but uh, yeah, nobody has it, so that's a real shame. Um, at least at the time of recording, Leo still has to do his one. I don't think anyone's got the Blaziken EX either, uh, at least I don't remember seeing it, so... Ah, uh, awkward. And nobody's got the Sceptile either which was also something I would have liked, because I, you know I love Sceptile, you know, with the, uh, I have a Blissey too, so it's like, you know I love Sceptile with Energy Trance, I would have totally done something with it there, <laughs> let's be real. Um, I might still do that with Venusaur, actually, who knows. Mm, I know Celebi has been pulled, so that one's fine. I know x has been pulled once, I don't remember if Kyogre got pulled, I'd have to have a look. 
but um, this one's kind of good too. Would have played that as well, uh, or maybe instead of Groudon EX, who knows. Lots of Jirachi around, lots of Del, well, enough Del Caddy around. Three Agron around. I think there's one or two Shiftery around. I know Pepper pulled one, so maybe that's to note. We didn't get Mysterious Shard at all, which is something that you can put on a non EX to give it safeguard for a turn, but it does get discarded at the end of the turn, so. A uh, bit of a shame. We also didn't get Hole on Circle whatsoever. I got like no disruption stuff in this set. Um, this is uh, basically a an attack stop. Uh, if you've ever seen, uh, what was the card called? Um, Chaotic Swell, I think it was, in uh, Cos. I want to say Cosmic Eclipse, the the stadium that bounced the stadium as soon as it got replaced. Uh, this is basically that, but for attacks. It bounces an attack, it stops it from doing anything, and uh, then it discards itself after the attack has happened. So if you're not going to attack a turn anyway, then just stop the opponent from attacking, and it's very irritating. But we didn't get one, so whatever. And then yeah, we basically didn't get this. Which is a shame because we did get the Castaway Engine, which would have been great to search this out. Could still play one though. Alright. And then last but not least, because I know this has gone on for quite a while despite being a somewhat uninteresting set, what on earth do I take as far as the theme decks go? Because most of them don't really have anything I would need, right? I have four Venusaur, so there's probably no point in taking this one, except for the random one Gulpin that's in here? Why is there one Gulpin in here? I don't know. I'll have to see if anybody else has got... I, I, they, they must do, it's not common. Surely we've got that. Um, would give me the 4 5 sword of that type, but I don't really need that, I don't think. This one, it would be for the 3rd Pelipper and the 5th Fero. We really don't need that. Um, I think I even got a full playset of the Blastoise too, so we don't need that whatsoever. Which then leads to this deck, which doesn't have a ton. We didn't see the Dog Trio. Uh, this prevents all of your bench Pokemon from taking damage, so it's like... Um, Manaphy, and on the stage one, in you know we're talking current format stuff. Its attacks are fine, right? But it's not really there for the attacks. I think we might take this deck in, regardless though, because I don't think I need anything from any of the other two. So this will give us access to this dog trio if we want to stop bench damage stuff. And uh, a third of Swampert here, uh, you could well play this actually. And then like a second one of the Medicham, I guess, if we ever do play that sort of thing. I don't think we will, but it is possible, so that's probably as good as it gets here. I don't know. I might take this just because it does have a draw option that isn't shut down by Battle Frontier, so that might be the, the play regardless. Yeah, because the decks aren't too impressive. I don't know. Or if I can't trade into this for some reason, then I have to take this one, but hopefully we can. Okay, lots of... <laughs> Excuse me. Don't mind me casually dying at the end of this one, I don't know. Lots of, uh, lots of stuff out of this that are... It's a pretty good set for me. Um, I have to see what I can do with it. So, look forward to that, I suppose. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.